Hey, good morning, Northridge. I'm glad that you guys are here and joining us for a brand new series uh, that's going to carry us all the way through the month of April. Okay, this is a, a conversation that we're having about what it looks like to love everyone everywhere. Because the truth is, I don't need to convince you that this world is crumbling under the weight of self, right? I, I mean, this world revolves around what do I want and what do I need, what brings me joy and pleasure and satisfaction. But we as a church, we as followers of Jesus, we know that we've been called to something different, right? We've been called to take our eyes off of ourselves and turn our attention towards the needs of others. And Jesus actually tells us what kind of reach we should be looking to have with that mindset in Acts 1.8. He says this, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. You see, our, our mission as a church, and, and our mission as individuals that make up this church, is, is to love people, right? Uh, to start with our neighbors and the people we interact with on a daily basis, but then to allow God's love to grow and expand through us to our city and our state and our country, and ultimately even the world. And so that's what we're talking about throughout this series. Now, as you can tell, we're doing things a little bit different to kick off this series, aren't we? Okay, I'm, I'm not up here alone standing up. I've got Amy here with me because it turns out that, that we have some people on staff that are really good at loving everyone everywhere. And so we decided for the first couple weeks of this series, we're just going to interview them. We're going to ask them some questions that will highlight some of the ways that we as a church are already involved in doing this, um, but also inspire us to maybe go out and, and to live intentionally to love everyone everywhere that we interact with on a daily basis. So our first conversation today is, is with Amy Rayburn, and Amy is our community engagement pastor. Uh, she's the wife of Clint, who's in the back running our tech stuff right now. He could turn our microphones off at any moment if he chooses to. <laughs> So we want to take care of him. Uh, she's also the mother of four boys and uh, has served in various roles here at the church um, since 2015. So a really long time. And if you know Amy, uh, you know that her heart beats for this community. Okay? Um, I, was, I was actually at a meeting with a bunch of local pastors a couple months ago. And uh, we were having a conversation about what we could do to come together and, and love on this community as one church um, meeting in multiple locations. And, and they actually insisted that we just pause the conversation until I could bring Amy with me uh, so that she could speak into it. One of them even called her our secret weapon, and I, I didn't argue with them <laughs> at all. So she has a relationship in our schools, the businesses, the nonprofits, and even the churches in our area for just loving people well. And so I'm grateful that we get a chance to talk to her, get to know her a little bit more, and, uh, and experience some of the things that God has placed on her heart. So thanks for letting us do this, Amy. Well, thanks for having so, me. <laughs> they don't ever clap for me, you know. <laughs> That's okay, though. Let's start off with this one, okay? Out of your four boys, which one do you love the most and why? Okay. <laughs> yeah, see, she told me last night that she was sick and wasn't going to be able to make it today just to make me panic. So I decided we would open with that question just to make her panic a little bit. So, no, seriously, I want to ask this just to start off the conversation, but what do you love about serving in this role as the community engagement pastor at Northridge? Yeah. Well, honestly, I can say that I love my job. My major is actually early childhood education, so I've always been a teacher. Um, but I feel like I can continue that here because one thing I think I loved about teaching is just my students um, and just people. And so I love being able to serve. Um, this is never my favorite. I'm like a background person and I like to serve. You know, I'd rather be serving on a buffet line or um, just serving people. Uh, but I think God brought me here um, for a reason and that's to, um, to show his love. But then also uh, teach others the joy of, um, of getting out of ourselves and being able to 
serve other people. Um, I'm not naturally like the, um, you know, glass half uh, full kind of person. I'm more of what I like to say a realist. Um, my husband's always the glass half full. I'm like the glass half empty or the realist, I'd like to say. Um, so I spend a lot of my time telling myself, find the joy, find the joy. You know, when something's not going my way, I like things to be just so. Um, I spend a lot of time telling my boys that, you know, through the years. Uh, when they're whining about stuff, um, or if things aren't going my way in my head and I'm whining to myself. Um, so just finding the joy in, in being here. Um, and there's a difference in happiness, um, I found, and like the joy that God has, um, has given us. Something um, that I try to do um, just for myself about twice a year is just read through the book of Nehemiah because I feel like that's what our church um, what we need to be modeling after Nehemiah. So um, he realized that um, the city where he lived, all the walls had been, um, because of war, had, uh, were, were gone. And walls back then were super uh, important. And so Nehemiah just didn't stand there helplessly. Um, he leveraged what he had. He leveraged, he was a cupbearer to the king. So he was able, even though he was scared, he was able to speak to the king. Um, he saw what was wrong um, in the city. But then after he saw it, he said, I'm going to pray about this. I'm going to fast about this. Listen to God. Ask for wisdom. Then he got to work. He didn't point fingers. Um, he said, all right, here's what we're going to do. And so he, um, he started looking around and said, well, what we're going to do is, I myself, Nehemiah, I can't do all this on my own. So he started getting other people excited about fixing what was wrong in their city. And so he talked to each family and was like, okay, you live here by this part of the wall. And you live here by this part of the wall. And you live here. So why don't these families, you guys work together and work on this part of the wall. And so the families started working each where they were within their families on that part of their city. And that's what was wrong. Well, each one started working on that part and then started building it back up. And so after a while, the city again had a wall around it. It wasn't because of Nehemiah and what he told everybody. He was like, this is not about about us. God will give us the strength. And it wasn't, wasn't one of those stories where, you know, everything was like, great. Um, in the story of Nehemiah, there are people who are whining and complaining and saying, but this. We don't have any of those what, people in this community no, at all, never. do we? Um, you know, and finger pointing and saying, well, they're not doing it right. But he powered through and he relied on God and he had them rely on God. He didn't take over and say, listen to me because I've got all the answers. He relied on God and was like, God can strengthen us. And that's what he prayed, God strengthen our hands. And so um, that's one thing that one of my goals in our community is, um, you know, come together as families, but then also come together as a church. Us not sitting up here finger pointing at everybody, finger pointing at our city or our county, you know, our, our world and say, this is what's wrong. Okay, well, we might know what's wrong, but let's pray, let's fast, and let's do something about it working together as families, working together as a church on ways that we can strengthen um, each other, strengthen our city and our county and our world. Okay. So a lot of what you do is you have eyes out in the community mm -hmm. to see what's working, what's not working, where some of the pain points are, and then mobilizing people to address a lot of those right. issues yes. and, and doing it all to bring glory to God. Yes. I try to go to as many meetings as I can. Mm -hmm. I try to um, say, how can we help as much as we can? And we can't always help with everything. There are a lot of great things going on, but we try to pick the things that we know um, that we can do. We're part of the Georgia Initiative for Community Housing, um, and we actually have a meeting this week. We're part of a lot of different things because we want to help be the solution wherever we are because we know that God is the solution. Mm -hmm. That's great. And, and what that means is 
as we contribute to the church as givers, because I'm a giver, you're a giver, all of you guys are giving towards the church, Amy is that person, that secret weapon that's looking out at the community and saying, here's a great place that we can invest some of our money, some of our resources to making a difference in this community, knowing that God's going to show up and maximize it and use it in a big way. So let me ask you this, how much money, to the best we can figure, because there's a lot of money that's invested in different ways and all, but, but what, what's the dollar amount over the past year that we have spent? as a church investing in this community? And, and are there any specific places that we've invested that money that you get really excited about? Yeah. So um, last year, so 2023, um, we invested about 140000 just in our community. So in organizations, um, the, the monthly giving that we give to, the nonprofits, um, the, the organizations in our community that are making a difference. Um, one of my favorite things that we do is um, we partner with uh, Middle Georgia Community Food Bank. We do blessing bags once a week. Um, we partner with one of the schools here. And each week we pack 65, just it's like a little meal. It has protein. It has eight different items in it. So we pack them here. Um, the teachers take the little backpack take a little bag, put it in the student's backpack so we know that they'll have something to eat over the weekend because there's some children they have identified at the beginning of the year that they know may not have food over the weekend. And so through that, because we buy from Middle Georgia Community Food Bank, um, a few years ago they said, hey, we have this refrigerated truck and we're going to bring food. Um, do you have a place for it? And we're like, sure. So um, they bring this refrigerated truck. We didn't want it to be here because we didn't feel like the surrounding community at Northridge um, needed it as much. And so we always partner with the Collins P. Lee Center uh, in Harrisburg. That's over by Lockerley, um, Dairy Queen, if you know that direction. Um, and we've been working with them for many, many years working with the county, just making that old school into a community center where people can come together um, and just create community. So we asked them, hey, can you bring this truck there? And so they come with this giant truck and open the back. They have pallets of food. They pull everything out. And then um, we pack it in individual boxes. And so um, January, February, and March, we had um, one, you know, one of those trucks come each month, and we served 41,000 pounds of food to our community. And most of those um, that come through are elderly. Um, they're on fixed incomes, and it's, it's good food. I mean, it's some canned food, but you've got collard greens, you've got um, different kinds of nuts, you've got uh, oranges, grapefruit, so all kinds of really great things, um, frozen chicken, frozen pork chops, so there's always a really um, good amount of people there serving. And I think that's one of my uh, favorite things is we have communities and schools there. Um, we have uh, the Atrium Navicent just sent some volunteers this week. Uh, Georgia College always sends people. We have people from our um, Harrisburg Collaborative that meet together. Everybody just shows up. And their cars, when I get there, already lined up and ready to, um, you know, ready to, people are there ready to serve. And it's a lot of fun. I always call it organized chaos. I'm a very, like, I like things to be just so. Um, but that's one of those things that kind of um, tests me a little bit and find the joy because um, you never know what they're going to bring. They open up the back, and so you're immediately trying to figure out, okay, there are 36,000 oranges um, right here, and we got to divide that and um, know how many to get in each one. And, um, and so we never know what it's going to be, but it's always a lot of fun and always a joy just serving with, um, with the different organizations that are there. Another one of my favorites is the Life Enrichment Center. We've been serving with them um, since we've been doing, uh, we did Night to Shine uh, for a few years before COVID. And the Life Enrichment Center is an organization that um, they serve people with special needs and they're adults. So they teach them skills, music, they work with Georgia College, um, and they have the truck. If you ever see the Morning Grind um, uh, trailer, 
they serve coffee out of that. Those are the Life Enrichment Center adults, so they're teaching them some life skills about how to sell things and make things. And um, so they're really one of my favorites that we also serve with. Uh, Chardray Food Bank is a really uh, great organization that we work with as well that are able to, um, we know that there's a lot of food insecurity in Bowen County. And so we looked around and said, all right, who is doing a great job with that? So um, we also partner with Chardray. So, I mean, we have a ton that I could go on mm -hmm. a long time on that. Well, and you can even go out here in our lobby and there's a wall that highlights right. a lot of our mission partners yeah. and stuff like that. But that leads to a question that I'm asked a lot. Yeah. And, and that's why do we partner with so many organizations instead of just like building all of those resources right here at the church and providing it ourselves. Um, why, why, do, why is our strategy to engage with so many different organizations and nonprofits and ministries and all of that in this community instead of just doing it all ourselves? Right. Well, it's just like we talked about with Nehemiah. Um, Nehemiah realized, hey, I can't do this all on my own. And so he leveraged what he had. He did what he, um, you know, he was, he was good at. And so we look around and say, hey, who's doing a good job? And as I mentioned, Chard Ray, they're doing a great job mm -hmm. in our community. And so um, one of the things that we said is like, hey, what do you need? Like, how can we help you? If you could just dream of anything, what would you need? And so one of the things that they needed was a circular driveway because they had where people went in um, and they were giving them food, but then they were having to back out. And so you have a lot of people um, where it could kind of get dangerous going in and out in one direction. And so um, we gave them $5,000, or you did, with the Christmas money from last year uh, to build a circular driveway so that they would be able to, um, to get in there better. We have Parental Accountability Court that, um, that we help, and they're doing a great job helping people to get over addictions, um, helping people to get, uh, like, anger management, um, and it strengthens families. And we know that the strengthening of families... Um, and that bedrock when you're, when you're building on God um, and you have a, a strong family, you have people that are, are working together and that um, children can come home and um, everybody's glad to see each other. Like those are the important things in life that you need. And so we find organizations that are doing really great things and then we come alongside them because we're not called to do everything. Mm -hmm. We're not called to do it all. God has given each of us separately different skills and things that we're good at but then he's also given um, blessed our community with some different organizations as well that are doing really great things um, we don't have a ramp ministry here anymore so we've been using a, a organization called brighter days it's a new nonprofit that has been established and so we've been partnering that's something that they help do is work with different churches so in all, it helps all of our churches come together to um, be able to bless other people with ramps, um, people who have sewage coming up into their home, fixing those things, um, especially a lot of elderly people that are on fixed incomes that just can't do all of the construction themselves. Mm -hmm. Or, as you guys know, the, the price of everything when it comes to fixing anything has skyrocketed. Um, and so being able to find organizations that are doing good and saying, hey, we love what you're doing and how can we come alongside you and help? Like we're not called to do it all. Mm -hmm. I like that because we don't have to reinvent the wheel sure. and learn how to make morning grind coffee and learn how to, yeah. how to do the ramps and learn how to do all that. You know, we get to just support all of these different groups and, and our resources go farther and the whole community is better because of our presence here because we're investing in so many other places. So I, I love that. And you talked about our Christmas offering from a year ago. And, and at our Christmas offering last December, we actually collected $48,000 above and beyond our regular offering so that we could purchase a trailer and we could fund all kinds of ministries that we're going to be doing with that trailer throughout the year. And the, the goal be behind that was if our strategy is not just to bring everybody here, but to actually go out in the community and do things, let's build something that will empower us to go to the community. When people see it, they're going to think of hope because they're going to know that we're there to bless people. Mm -hmm. so, so that's in the works right now. Can you give yes. us an update on the trailer and, and even fill us in on some of the projects that we're going to be doing with it over the next little while with yes. that money? So the trailer has been built, and we actually brought it here while we were waiting um, to get it wrapped because we wanted, um, we wanted you to be able to see it coming and you to be able to say, wow, you know, this, we are bringing 
joy. We're bringing hope. Um, so it should be done this week. It's supposed to be done tomorrow. So um, you should be able to, to see it parked out back. Um, but we are going to debut it on Serve Day because we weren't sure, you know, when, when it was going to get done. So on Serve Day, we're actually using it. One of the things that we're doing is we are um, taking bicycles to one of our apartment complexes um, on South Jefferson Street. Street. It's called um, the Milledgeville Manor. And so we're going to bring our trailer there, um, fill it with bicycles and a few other trucks too because they're not going to all fit. Um, we talked to the manager there and said, how many students do you have? So we got the little bubble uh, lawn mowers for the toddlers. Um, everybody four and up, so four all the way to 18, um, they're going to get a bicycle and, of course, a helmet um, so that they will have some things to do outside to be able to ride around their neighborhood. Um, it's a good little, um, there's a good little kind of play area there. And so they'll be able to just get out and be able to interact with each other and have um, some safe things to do. The county actually just got a, I think, like a $1.3 million grant um, for that whole area. It's called Oconee Heights. That'll be and a big trailer. Yeah. yeah. So <laughs> the county um, is doing like one-way streets there. So it's kind of like we're finding what the county's doing and what mm -hmm. other places are doing and saying, hey, they're going to have some really great places to bike now, and there's also going to be lights um, that'll be there in the neighborhood. So we're super excited about that. But also, um, after Serve Day, we already are planning to go. One of the schools asked us to come um, for their Teacher Appreciation Week. Uh, this summer, we're planning on popping up in um, the, like, uh, the Greenway or any of the parks in the area um, and just being able to serve, maybe taking it to some county employees, um, to the city police station, um, the county. So we've got a lot of really great things planned for mm -hmm. it um, because we want people um, to be able to know that, like, our God is generous. Um, I got into a little bit of a, a disagreement, an argument with the guy that was wrapping our trailer um, because he kept trying to convince me that we needed to charge people for stuff. He was like, oh, well, you could do this and, and then, you know, recoup some money. And I was like, no, you don't understand. I kept trying to explain to him, like, we, this is a gift from us, from our congregation to our community. And we want people to know that, like, God is a God of love and he's a God with no strings attached. And so, you know, we, we don't want to recoup anything. We want them to know that it's okay to be generous and our God is generous and to be, and I finally just had to say, we want people to be surprised by generosity. Like we want them to be like, what? You're giving away bicycles? What? You're giving away this? Um, because we want people to know that we are on their side and also God is on their side. Mm -hmm. And that's the bottom line. And y'all, this, this trailer is immaculate. It's my new office, so if you can't find me here, I'm going to be hanging out out there. Uh, but I mean, it's, it's got a kitchen in it. It's got a serving window. It's, it's going to provide so many different uh, tools and resources, open the door for a lot of opportunities for us. It's the Northridge in the Neighborhood Trailer is what we've been calling it, so we've been calling it Nina. Um, as a staff lately. So if we talk about Nina, that's, that's what we're talking about. And the $48,000, uh, just to emphasize, that was not the cost of the trailer. Right. Um, that's the cost of the trailer and all of these projects that we're planning mm -hmm. on doing this year so that we can just be showing radical generosity in this community. So let's say people out here want to get involved in some of these projects. They want to go with you to, to give out some of this mm -hmm. stuff or to be a part of that. How can they go about finding out about these opportunities? Well, we do have an email list. So what I'll do is um, I'll say, hey, here's serving opportunities in April. And it's not one of those where people have to email me back and say, oh, I can't do that one or I can't do that one. Um, if there's a, a way, like if I need to know you're coming, I'll just say, hey, if you're going to, if you want to do this, click here. Um, and then you can sign up to come. So we have some standing opportunities. Every Tuesday, we've been partnering with Cafe Central, which is at Freedom Church. Um, and they just serve hot meals. And we know food insecurity is a major problem uh, here in Baldwin County, especially for um, our elderly. And so um, we just have a standing opportunity where you can um, really just show up to that because there's always um, people to serve and stuff to do. So I'll just have those listed. Um, so if you're interested in that, there is a, a QR code um, in front of you on the seat or behind you on the seat. And um, it says, um, I think, the email list. 
uh, for uh, serving. So not serve day, because we do have two different things going on. Um, there's like serving all the time, all year, and then we have um, serve day opportunities. And if they struggle well. with that, they can just go to our website, send yes. you an email, and you'll yeah, get it all worked yeah, out. Yeah, it's all on the email, um, all on the uh, website, or you can email me or just find me, and I can, I can help with that. Okay. So. All right, and you mentioned Serve Day. I want to camp out there for just a few minutes because Serve Day is one of my favorite things we do as a church. I know a lot of you probably haven't been able to experience Serve Day yet, uh, but you're going to in just a few weeks because it's April 28th, and, um, and basically what we do is we have a quick rally here at the church uh, on a Sunday morning, and then we send everybody from our church out into the community to serve in multiple different sites and ministering in a lot of different ways, using skills, you know, some of it's manual labor, some mm-hmm. of it doesn't require that. It's all different projects that you can participate in. Um, sometimes we meet here for a long time because it's pouring down rain outside and we've got to kill some time uh, while we get ready for the rain to stop. This year, that's not going to happen, no, though. God already told me it's not going to rain, it's going to be sunny, and, uh, and we're going to be quickly out of here so that we can go serve in that way. Um, But it's a great exclamation point to this whole Everyone Everywhere series that we're going to be doing. So for those that are unfamiliar with it, is there a story from last year, from the past Serve Day experience that really just captures the heart of Serve Day so that they could feel like they were a part of it even if they weren't? Well, we like to do new things every year, but then we also like to keep relationships with our organizations. And um, there's one family that we actually built a ramp for uh, probably in 2015 or 16. And so we had just been going back to Miss Angela's house every single um, serve day. We're like, what do you need this year? Um, Because she had a lot of heart issues and health issues where she just couldn't do things herself. And um, so we would go. We went in 2017, 2018. Um, We weren't able to go for, uh, you know, during COVID. So um, last year we went, and she'd pretty much been uh, given a death sentence. Um, she'd had some, some heart issues, they'd done surgery, and they pretty much said, you have an infection, and it's not going to get any better. And so the, the cool thing about the group that went, um, the leader that went and did where he kind of inspected everything, he was like, one thing that she said that really brings her joy is um, to be able just to sit outside and, you know, be in the sun, be in nature, you know, see people walking by. And so um, we got her a great big rocking chair that she could sit on the front porch and rock and be able to, um, to enjoy just being outside and being able to see something besides the, the walls in her home. Um, another thing after that, so the group that was there um, just really, you know, loved her and I think developed a relationship. But um, another thing that she really wanted, she was like, before I died, really love to just not be in my, and not have to sleep in my living room. And so Brighter Days, um, a new nonprofit ministry, um, went in and pretty much gutted her old bedroom and that was in terrible shape and redid everything in there. Um, we had some volunteers from the church. We bought her some things and then we opened the door and just did a big reveal and she was, she was in pain. She was really, you know, in a lot of pain. But just the joy on her face when she came in and was able to see this, this new bedroom. And it, it was just a blessing. She was only able to, to sleep there for two nights. And she went into the hospital and um, she passed away. So that part was really hard. Um, and it's one of those where sometimes you're just like, why? But just knowing that you guys, um, even if you weren't there, were able to bring her that joy and to let her know, again, that there, God loves her, there are no strings attached, that people can come in and do things for you because they love God and because they want you to know that God loves you. And the, just the joy that she experienced from that, like me knowing that she got to feel a little piece of heaven, of the joy of heaven, before she actually got to see her Heavenly Father was um, such a blessing. So um, we try to keep those relationships um, with people and, and walk alongside them. Um, and then also... Um, you know, do some things that are just pop up where we pop up and then maybe won't see people again, but we can still 
bring uh, heaven and joy to them for a little bit. Mm -hmm. Well, and I love it because it's not just work sites or projects. Mm -hmm. It's story after story after story like that of somebody that got to experience heaven mm -hmm. um, through our generosity because God has given to us and we want to be a blessing to others. And that's what Serve Day is all about. So Rapid Fire, what are some of the other projects that we do on a regular basis? So we have um, Collins P. Lee. We have a relationship with them. We go, just go there every single time. There's always stuff to do. It's a little park um, in Harrisburg, and so there are always a lot of great things that we can do. We have Chardray Food Pantry, which I mentioned before. Um, we say, hey, how can we help? Um, we have Savannah Court, which is a nursing home not far from us. They have raised beds. Um, we do nails, um, just anything, just talking to people. Here we do meal packing, and then um, so we pack meals, and then we give those to organizations in our community. Um, we also did baskets for new mom that we took to the hospitals. Um, we took to the health department and other places, defects, people that needed it. We have Lakeview Primary School. Um, this year we'll be at Midway Hills Academy. So we always try to do a school and support what's going on there. Um, one year we built a chicken coop because that was something that they needed and their special ed students um, come out, feed those, take care of them. We have quarters at the laundromat. That one's always fun because people are really surprised by generosity um, at those. And we've developed a lot, a lot of a lot of relationships through that. We have the Veterans Home. We do that every year. Um, we feed them. We hang out with them. Just have some, um, some good conversations with them and letting them know that they're not forgotten. Uh, this is an important one, the nursery at Northridge. Um, people who are here food packing um, can leave their, uh, their babies all the way up to four-year-olds, and we take care of them. So we have a group of people that just take care of them um, while we are food packing. We do yard work for um, different families in our community who are, aren't able to, um, to do those things themselves. So we have a ton, the Life Enrichment Center, like I, um, I mentioned before. We've done them every year. Um, they have a really great facility and um, we're always painting or building or doing things that, um, that they need. So um, those are some things that we've done in the past, and we've got a whole bunch of um, new ones as well coming. Yeah, I'm excited about all of that stuff. Now, what if, if people are here and they're hearing all of this, they're thinking about signing up, but they're going, but what about my children? Um, I've got kids, I can't serve because I've got them, or, or maybe I don't have the physical ability to go out and do yard work or something like that. What would you say to them to get them to sign up for this special opportunity in just a few weeks? Well, you know how people say, like, I've, I've never been sad eating chips and queso at a Mexican restaurant. Have you heard people say that? You know, like, I don't know the secret to life, now that but I've you never been it, sad. But... Yeah, so, um, I, you know, I don't know the secret to happiness, but I do know that serving kills selfishness. Hmm. Um, and that if you look in all those pictures, you're not going to see anybody that's like, oh, why am I here? I mean, it, it's a joy just to be able to serve together, but then also serving um, with other people. And it's a great way to get to know people, um, just working together and just sometimes experiencing things that are just, you're like, this would be miserable in any other, um, uh, you know, occasion. Um, but like working in the rain, would I do that at my house? No, but... Serve day last year, we were all out there working together, and I didn't see one person that looked sad or one person that was like, why am I here? Um, there's just a joy, and God put it in us. You know, the, if you um, listen to scientists talk, one of the things that they say do, like if you're, if you're sad, if you're depressed, help, go help somebody, go serve somebody. God put that in us. You know, he put that in us so that we can um, be able to get a joy that we can't get from serving ourselves. So we've got a ton of new things that are coming up. We have, um, well, I told you all about the manor, um, taking the, the bicycles there. We're actually going to be beautifying some areas like um, Memory Hill Cemetery. That's a new one. Um, because what is God doing all the time? He's, he, he did the Garden of Eden. He's always working for good. He's always beautifying spaces. And so that's one of the things that we do. Um, there might not be people we get to interact with there, but we're, we're bringing beauty uh, wherever we go. So. Okay. 
Yeah, I love that. And, and so if you've got kids or anything like that, you mentioned that they can um, work here yes. and then they can use the nursery over here. But I want to encourage you, if you've got kids, take them with you to serve. We would rather you be less productive, but serve with your kids. And I've done that. I've had my kids with paintbrushes. When they show up to school the next week and they know they painted that mm-hmm. bench that their friends are sitting on, man, it is unbelievable. And so absolutely bring them with you to do that. Mm-hmm. There's projects that require manual labor. There's projects that don't require manual mm-hmm labor. There's things indoors and outdoors. So many opportunities. You definitely want to sign up. So tell them how they can sign up for it. All right. So there's a QR code that'll be up on the screen. Um, The way you do those is you open your camera and then you point it towards there. A little yellow thing will come up and you click on that. So that's how that works. If you have trouble with that, that's totally fine. Or if you just want to, you look at it and you're like, I don't know what I want to do. You can come find me or, um, you know, talk to some of the staff and just say, hey, um, these are my limitations. I do like this. I I don't like bending down. So I might not want to be, you know, planting flowers and that kind of thing. That's fine. You know, you, we all do what what we're good at um, and what we can do. And so there's a whole bunch of different things outside, some inside, some things that um, you can choose from, some with chainsaws. Um, you know, some people love, like... They don't let me do that one. <laughs> we had a staff member um, last year that, like, was taught to use a chainsaw for the first time, and it was just amazing. And so there's always um, things that we can learn, so you don't have to feel like... Um, you're good at anything. Another thing that we're doing, um, I forgot to mention, was um, the Brighter Days Ministry, the nonprofit that we've been uh, working with, um, is going to be at Central State Hospital. They're leasing a building there. Um, when the state left Central State, it just was kind of like, boom, they were gone. And so everything is just in the building, like papers, every, everything, tools, all the things. So um, we're helping them go in, clean all of that up, throw some things away, keep some things. Um, that's another thing we'll be doing. So um, there's a whole bunch of just different things that, um, that anybody should be able to do. And if you have questions, just come find me or find a staff person, and we'd love to hook you up with, um, with something that you would enjoy. Yeah. Well, I want to close with this because what we do as a church is we provide opportunities for you to get involved in serving chances like this and and to know what's going on and to be able to get involved and use your talents and your gifts and your passions. But what we hope is that you'll use Amy as a resource, but look for opportunities to do this without waiting on the church to plan it for you. You may say as a community group or as a family, hey, I see a need in this community. I'm going to talk to Amy and she's going to help me get connected to some of these other things that I can do any time of the year um, so that I can just live on purpose to make a difference in this community. We had over 2,000 people here last weekend. We want 2,000 missionaries out in this community changing the world. And Amy is a great tool and resource to help us do that. So what we're going to do is is we're going to stand up in just a second because they're going to clean all this stuff up so that we can get back into worship. Uh, But I'm going to ask for you to lead us in a prayer for our community, and uh, then we're going to jump back into a time of worship. All All right, let's pray together. Dear Heavenly Father, we are so thankful for the way you have been moving. Lord, we see it, and we're so grateful. Lord, we thank you for loving us, no strings attached. Lord, help us to, um, to let others know that, Lord, in our family, in our neighborhood, in our city, in our county, Lord. May wherever we go, our eyes, our face, just exude your joy. Lord, we just thank you for the opportunities you have given us. And Lord, we just ask that you strengthen our hands. You help us to um, just to be able to work with each other, not pointing fingers, Lord, but finding the things that we know need changing and saying, Lord, how can you use us? How can you use our strengths? How can you even use our weaknesses, Lord, for your glory? We thank you for all that you have done, and we thank you for all that you are doing and have yet to do. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Hey, y'all give Amy a hand and thank her for the time she spent talking to us and for all the things she does in this community. Hey, listen, we're going to go back into one more song for worship. And we thought about not ending this service and the interview with another worship song, but, but this one particular song stood out to us because it's called I've Witnessed It. And the whole beginning part of the song is a celebration of what we've witnessed God do in our midst. 
But then the ending, it challenges us to go out and proclaim what God has done to the world around us. And that's what today is all about. It's, it's going out into our community and living on purpose and making a difference by proclaiming what Jesus has done. And so we're going to sing this song, The Altars Are Open. This is a great place for you to come in. There's a specific part of this community that's on your heart, specific school or, or a specific area, a specific project that you want to see accomplished in this community. Come up and fall on your face and spend some time praying to God that he he would show up in a powerful way in those areas. We've also got prayer partners on both sides of the stage. You could just follow the light. If there's anything you want to talk to them about, pray about, they would love the opportunity to spend some time with you there. But let's stand up and let's worship together.